So maybe you started 2024 enthusiastic with the goal to get better at rendering, but for whatever reason, you haven't quite gotten where you want to be yet. We're in December now, and there's only a few weeks left in the year. So is it actually still possible to reach this goal, or is there no hope at all? In an ideal scenario, you would have started at the start of the year, you would have come up with a plan, you would have kept yourself accountable for your progress. But honestly, does this ever really happen? Personally, with some of my own goals, I've let these slip right to the end of the year, and it's become insanely stressful. So I just want to share a few tips that will help you achieve your goals when it comes to rendering that I've found really, really useful and are just going to boost your skill level in a very short amount of time. So step one is to pick a reference project. It's really important that you pick something that excites you, that motivates you, that makes you feel just really driven to work and you're just super inspired by what you see. You probably do this without even realizing when you're looking for inspiration. Um, maybe you've actually followed an actual reference project and if you have, that's perfect. That's such a good way to grow and learn in a very, very short amount of time. If you haven't done that yet, I would highly suggest starting working on reference projects, especially if you're just getting into 3D rendering, if you're using Blender, that kind of thing. Um, so definitely step one, get into reference projects. It's also kind of important that you pick something that is a 3D project. You know, you might actually pick a photo or something, but you've literally just set the bar for achieving this insanely high. If I've got a photo that I'm trying to reproduce, it's I still struggle at this and I've been doing this for more than four years now. So if you're in the industry of ArcVis like I am, you could even look at some ArcVis firms and just see what kind of work they're doing and maybe you're just really inspired by a certain project they do. But it's actually really important that you pick something that is achievable. Otherwise, you're just going to be demotivated and not feel very good about yourself. So this is all about building self-confidence when it comes to renders. And the other thing is you want to make sure that it's a achievable project for you. If you've just gotten into ArcVis, you shouldn't really be doing a skyscraper or a big city scene. Maybe start with an interior shot, something like a living room where you add a few elements, you close off the walls, you change the lighting. It's a little bit more of a safe environment to learn in and um, you can actually grow quite quickly when you feel comfortable with the kind of project that you're doing. Got my coffee here. So another really key step after we've picked the right reference project, maybe you've modeled you know, a building up or something. I'm gonna keep referring to ArcVis because that's actually um, the work that I do personally and that's the kind of thing that I teach. So let's assume that you've modeled something up, you've maybe put some textures on it, you might have actually picked a camera shot already. We wanna make sure that the lighting is actually like looking epic. So we wanna make sure that the angle of the sun is not behind the camera specifically, because that will completely blow out the colors, it will make it look super ugly. Uh, this is something not a lot of people actually know. You can even test putting the sun directly in front of the camera. Um, that's gonna create some really, really interesting effects. And it's gonna actually have quite a cinematic feeling to it. You wanna make sure that you're testing increments of probably 20 to 45 degrees, and basically just create a little snipping tools of what you've just done chuck that on a software like Pure Ref, which is free, and you can keep track of the sun angle and how it looks as well. So if you wanna just get started with this, you can use some free HDRs from Polyhaven. These are CC0, so they are Creative Control Zero. So I'm not gonna explain exactly um, how to do this process. You can actually check out my HDRI tutorial on this, but you can get some free ones on Polyhaven. Um, they're a great resource for getting all sorts of different environments and um, yeah, I highly recommend checking them out. And when you're making your selection, it's actually quite important that you pick an HDRI that's similar to your reference project. The idea here is that we wanna copy exactly what the reference project is when it comes to the materials, the modeling, the lighting, because if you can achieve basically the reference project, that means that you've actually got on to a really, really high level of skill, and then you can actually start to make your own work. So now that we've got our lighting sorted, the next step is to pick the right camera angle. And it's actually pretty straightforward with this. I would just recommend sticking with a front on render or a 45 degree render. And you can play around with different crops, like a vertical crop if you're doing an Instagram post. You know, I do a lot of Instagram posts, you can actually check my Instagram out. 
um, and yeah, it's 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 just a, a great way to mix it up. So many renders are in um, 16 by 9, 1080p resolution, whatever you want to call it. They're all horizontal, and it's just cool to do a, a vertical every now and then just to mix it up. It has a different feeling to it. You see more foreground and you see more sky. Um, so yeah, it's got a cool vibe. Play around with the angle, front on, 45, play around with the crop. And also you just want to make sure that the height of the camera is relatively eye level to the scene. This is something that quite a lot of people get wrong. Um, you actually want to make sure that you that the viewer feels like they're in the scene. And the only way to do that is to actually put them at eye level. So it's a, it's a simple tip, but it's actually pretty important and it will help you a lot. And you also want to just include depth of field on the camera settings. You can do this in the camera settings. <laughs> I would just pick um, maybe f f 1.2, f 1.4, f 1.8, um, or even f 5.6. Um, you don't even need to know what these numbers mean. Basically, f 5.6 is just quite sh um, quite sharp depth of field. f 1.2, you've got a lot of depth of field and you've got a lot of blur in the foreground and the background, but the focal point is nice and sharp. So play around with that. Those are real world camera measurements. And the last step here is to apply color correction. Some people may call this post-production, but basically after you press F12, you wanna chuck this into GIMP or Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve or whatever you want, um, and, and just play around with the brightness, darkness, the values. Um, I like to actually turn my screen to black and white when I deal with this kind of thing. And then after you've kind of messed around with the contrast and the brightness and darkness, then you can move on to the colors. Um, alter the hue saturation value um, d depending on the program that's generally the idea and then you can apply some grain and vignette um, whatever whatever you want really so in summary you really want to pick the right reference project to begin with it has to be something that's achievable and something that really excites you as a 3d artist and make sure that it is 3d art just just so that it's actually achievable the next step is to use HDRI lighting. If you're in ArcViz, maybe there's other you know lighting tools that you use. If you're in product or you know other stuff like that, um, but if you're in ArcViz, use HDRI lighting. Make sure the sun isn't directly behind the camera, and you should be sweet. And make sure that the time of day and kind of HDRI sort of matches the, um, the the reference project because the closer you can get to that, the more you'll feel like you've done a good job. You then want to just pick a camera angle like a front on or a 45, play around with the crop and then the depth of the field as well. And just make sure that the height of it is, you know, relatively eye level. I like to do 1.7, 1.8 meters above floor level. And after you've pressed F12 to render, you can chuck this into GIMP, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve to edit the colors and the values and all that kind of thing. So if you follow these steps, then your best project is just around the corner and you should be able to achieve this by the end of the year. If you want to boost your skill level with ArcViz, you can check out my channel. I've got all sorts of different tutorials. Um, and also, you know, if you want to grow as a 3D artist, you can join my free community on Discord. There's a link in the description. So I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.